SRAM's Access Drivetrain debuted wireless electronic shifting a few years ago, ditching the traditional cable to shift the derailleur. And now, SRAM's new T-type transmission systems go one step further, ditching the derailleur hanger and adjustment screws. In this video, we're going to unpack tons of new tech for the new SRAM transmissions, install them on our bikes, ride them, reveal them, and answer one big question. Is this just another incremental improvement, or is it a serious game changer for mountain bike shifting forever? Stick around until the end, and you'll find out. Okay, we usually like to keep our videos about 10 to 15 minutes long, but today we are going to go a little bit longer than that because there is so much to unpack with these new strand transmissions. So, we're going to give you a little roadmap about where we're going so you can just skip right to it if you're in a rush. I'm Tor at the Lost Co. I'm Mike, and we're going to answer one question first. Tor, what happened to your eyeball? It was a full contact soccer game. Now, let's talk about bikes. The new products from SRAM have been coming in hot and heavy recently, and these are the new transmissions with T-type components, aka transmission type components. Yes, SRAM is calling them transmissions instead of drivetrains now because they have been completely redesigned to work together as an interdependent system. While you can still mix and match between models of T-type components, this new stuff is not cross-compatible with the previous Axis generation. These transmissions come in three main yummy flavors. We've got XO, XX, and XXSL. All three of these transmissions offer super similar shifting performance on trail, but they're designed for different disciplines of riding. The biggest thing setting them apart is their weight, with lighter weight materials like carbon fiber popping up everywhere as you move up the model range. XO is their purpose-built enduro option, XX right here is for both enduro and trail riding, and then XXSL is for cross-country riding. Here at the Lost Co, the XO and XX drivetrains tend to be our bread and butter because they're both geared towards that trail and enduro riding that you know we love. So we'll be focusing most of our attention on these two group sets in this video. SRAM's access components have been out for a few years now, so this video won't be a fully in-depth rundown on wireless shifting every little tiny feature. If you'd like to learn some more general bits and bobs about SRAM access and wireless shifting in general, we have a few other videos about access on our YouTube channel that you can check out. While there is seriously a ton of new tech to unpack with this new T-Type stuff, first, let's just quickly cover the features that are carried over from the original version of Axis drivetrains. Well, it's still a 12-speed wireless shifting set of gears using the exact same battery as before, it's still super waterproof, and it still has that overload clutch which helps the derailleur protect itself from when you hit it with a hammer just for fun. This makes for an excellent party trick, but more importantly, it also keeps your fancy derailleur from exploding on impact whenever it kisses a cute rock. The first version of Access carried most of the same shifting technology from the cable actuated drivetrains offered at the time, and the big purpose there was to crack the code of getting the wireless shifter and derailleur to shift and function flawlessly. However, this new T-Type stuff has been designed as an entirely new system meant to truly be the next generation of mountain bike shifting performance. SRAM claims the Eagle transmission sets a new bar for mountain bike shifting performance and durability, and even claims it shifts better the harder that you're pedaling. So, how the heck does that work? Well, make some popcorn because it's time to unpack a bag of new tech so big that most airlines will charge you to bring it on board. <laughs> <laughs> All of these new transmissions are only compatible with SRAM UDH frames because all the derailleurs mount directly to the frame, which means they don't even use a derailleur hanger. Most new bikes from the past few years have been designed with the UDH, so if you've bought a new bike recently, the odds of these transmissions fitting on your bike are pretty high. Plus, it's safe to say that pretty much every new bike coming out in the future is going to be built around UDH. But if you are looking at ordering one of these transmissions, definitely double check that your bike uses a UDH before checking out. Also, something to note is that all of these T-type components are not cross-compatible with the old Eagle drivetrains at all, with the exception of the shifter pod. That means you can't just buy the fancy new derailleur and slap it on your current Eagle drivetrain and expect everything to work exactly how it was intended. That being said, these group sets are only being sold as complete packages at first. Every single component is completely redesigned, so just like a spoiled kid on Christmas morning, we've got a lot to unwrap here. We're going to start at the handlebars with the shift controller and work back through the cranks, chain ring, chain, cassette, and that brand new hangerless derailleur where all the magic happens. So let's dive right in. This new Axis Pod Controller is ultra streamlined and ultra adjustable. You can spin it around, switch which side of the bars it's on, change which buttons shift up and down, and even choose between convex and concave buttons. It's also the only T-type component that is backwards compatible with the previous Axis, and the old shift controller is the only part that is forwards compatible with the new stuff. Now moving back to the cranks, the XX cranks are carbon fiber with a foam core, and the XO cranks are aluminum with a hole through the middle of them. 
Wow. These XO cranks are SRAM's lightest aluminum cranks, and I think they're the best looking cranks they've ever made. Also, all of the chain rings mounted the cranks with eight volts now, which is kind of a lot, but it's to make all these new cranks power meter compatible in case you want to measure exactly how much fun you're having on the climbs. The new chain rings also have built-in bash guards that can save the day next time you frame case a rock, and you can just pop a fresh one in to replace a busted one. A pro tip on these bash guards is to just leave the one that sits on the underside of the chain ring when you're sending to save a little bit of weight. Or if you're crazy enough to switch your feet on the way down, you can leave them both on there. Wrapped around the chain ring is that new flat top chain, which looks super sleek. You might recognize this chain type from SRAM's road and gravel lineup, but this isn't a copy and paste situation like you did in college, as this chain is specific to their mountain bike transmissions. It's the strongest chain SRAM has ever made thanks to redistributing some of the metal from the sides of the links to the top of the links, which also makes the chain more narrow than previous 12-speed chains. The thinner width combined with a newly redesigned bottom side of the chain lends a hand to create the best shifting performance of any SRAM drivetrain. The T-Type cassettes are also new and still mounted on the same XD drivers before. They've got the same 10 to 52 tooth range that we've gotten used to on the previous Eco cassettes, but they've got refined gear progression in the easier gears with smaller jumps between those big old dinner plates. Also, each of these cogs now use the X-Sync narrow wide profile, just like the chain ring, which helps the chain retention and extends chain life. You'll also notice this red ring tucked inside of there, which you'll use when setting up the transmission on your bike, and it's the only cog without X-Sync. Plus, it looks pretty cool too. Yep. These cassettes also have a cool feature that SRAM refers to as cassette mapping that controls how the chain shifts through the cogs. We'll talk more on that later, but first, we have to talk about the most important piece of the puzzle, and that is the new derailleur. All right, where the heck do we even start with this thing? Well, like we mentioned earlier, the most obvious change is that there is no more derailleur hanger. It's gone now. These T-type derailleurs mount directly to the frame, which SRAM refers to as full mount and a overall hangerless interface between the derailleur and the frame. There's a couple of performance advantages to this design, and first we'll talk about how it increases the strength of this T-type derailleur. Now, as most of us know, the purpose of that derailleur hanger was to save the derailleur when you inevitably smack it into a rock. The cheaper hanger would break before your expensive derailleur does, saving you potentially hundreds of dollars every time you took a questionable line. So by building the hanger into the derailleur, they've had to make every piece of the mounting interface significantly stronger so that it won't break when you clip a rock. I've actually been standing on mine the whole time we've been talking just to prove its strength. Holding it next to a previous generation Eagle derailleur shows how overbuilt these T-type models are. And paired with the overload clutch to protect it during impacts, this derailleur is one tough cookie. And if you do somehow manage to break one, they are way more rebuildable than previous SRAM derailleurs. With a fully replaceable cage, skid plates, outer link, and B-knuckles on the XO and XX models. The next benefit of the full mount derailleur is that it drastically simplifies the setup procedure. The new T-type derailleurs don't even have B-tension or limit screws because they don't need them. SRAM is able to do this because the derailleur and cassette are now both mounted around the same point, and that's the rear axle. That means that there's no concern about adjusting the derailleur to be in line with the cassette, because the only way they wouldn't be in line is if your axle bends, brakes, or suddenly disappears. <laughs> Traditional derailleurs use B-tension and limit screws to correctly align the derailleur with the cassette because they're separated by the frame and the hanger. Now with those two variables in play and basically no rigorous standards around their exact mounting locations, the derailleur had to be super adjustable to work on every different frame and hanger that it was ever installed on. But now, by mounting the derailleur and the cassette around the rear axle, they will always be perfectly aligned. The setup key is the secret sauce to setting the derailleur up perfectly for your specific bike. It operates kind of like a flip chip to adjust the position of your derailleur, and this is only used for initial setup and it actually never gets flipped again once it's set. SRAM is able to get rid of the limit screws because the high and low limits are physically built into the derailleur. This makes installing the T-type derailleur easier than anything else on the market. So if you're a rider who's always struggled to get their gears shifting perfectly at home, there's no need to worry about those finicky little adjustment screws anymore. Installing a T-Type transmission is super straightforward. The tools you need are some hex wrenches, torx wrenches, a torque wrench, a socket style cassette tool, chain link pliers, and a chain breaker approved for SRAM flat top chains. Before touching any of the components, use either the Access app or SRAM website to find which setup key position, setup cog, and chain length you'll use for your specific bike. SRAM has a chart that tells you exactly how long your chain has to be for perfect shifting, taking the guesswork out of cutting a chain to length. Next, torque your cassette to 40 newton meters, pop in the cranks and torque those down to 54 newton meters. Then, mount your pod controller to your handlebar and position it to wherever is most comfortable for you. From here on, everything is based around SRAM's prepare, hang, 
Titan procedure. Prepare your derailleur and controller by pairing them together, and cut your chain to the length you found on the website or access app. They've even got a little measurement page in the instruction booklet to make this super, super easy. Get your derailleur setup key in the right position for your bike, and now you're ready to hang. Make sure to get that old UDH off and hang that derailleur on your frame. Install your wheel, shift your derailleur into the setup position in the setup cog that SRAM specifies for your bike, and route your chain through the transmission. Our last step is to tighten everything, so pull the derailleur back to tension it, rotate the cranks a few times to center everything, and then torque down the derailleur to 35 newton meters. Tighten your axle, make some quick micro adjustments to dial in the shifting, and it's time to hit the trail. After installation, you will also notice that the derailleur looks bent when you look at it in line with the chain, and that's because it is. It's called an inline cage, and it's bent to point the chain back at the chain ring in every gear to prolong the life of your chain and also keep things a little bit quieter. Also, the XX and XXSL derailers use what's called the magic wheel, which keeps spinning in the event that you get a stick or something else jammed in your lower pulley. This could save your derailleur from getting yanked off your frame and ruining either your casual Sunday ride or your super important race run. All right, so that's enough about all the individual bits. Now let's talk about how this stuff all works together. Now SRAM makes a huge claim saying that this drivetrain shifts better the harder you pedal during the shift. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. This drivetrain shifts better the harder you pedal while shifting. Dude, are you sure that you're reading that right? Dude, yeah, it says it right here. Huh. This goes against everything that we know about shifting a bike. So how the heck does this work? Well, the combination of the stronger, thinner chain and the stiffer full mount rear derailleur work together with what SRAM refers to as cassette mapping, which we haven't really touched on yet. Cassette mapping helps control when and where the shifts happen to make every shift as seamless as possible. And honestly, it is pretty dang complicated. But in a nutshell, it's a blend of firmware in your derailleur and hardware in your cassette to control where the shifts happen on your cassette and how fast they happen. This aims to help the chain fully engage on both the cog you're shifting out of and the cog that you're shifting into at the same time, so there's no moment where your chain isn't completely engaged with your cassette and driving you forward. By using revised shift ramps and precisely timed movements in the derailleur, SRAM ensures that the chain climbs up or down to the next cog in the optimal spot for the chain to engage with the teeth of both cogs at once and lets you put power down the entire time through the shift, which is pretty sweet. Now, we're just like expensive race cars with no lift shifting, and you can stay on the power the whole way through a shift. The ability to reliably shift under heavy load is most beneficial when you're trying to make it up a technical climb where keeping momentum is key, or if you're sprinting off the line at the start of a race and you need to go from your easiest gear to your hardest gear while giving it everything you've got. Historically, drivetrains have always been designed to shift under load as well as possible, but momentarily easing off the power was really the only way to consistently get a clean shift doing that. These transmissions are pretty different though, so we threw it up in the stand to try to spot what it's doing differently compared to other drivetrains. And, anticlimactically, it works pretty much the same as every other drivetrain we looked at when we're shifting them in the stand. However, it's the on-trail performance where you can really feel how it functions differently compared to other drivetrains. We've been riding these transmissions for about a month now in some of the sloppiest Pacific Northwest conditions of the year. So, let's talk about how this new stuff actually works in the real world. Welcome to Lost Co Impossible Climb, where Mike is starting in his 12th gear, the hardest gear, the tiny 10 cog, and he's gonna pedal about 25 feet up this really steep hill and see if he can get into his first gear in that range. Let's see what happens, Mike. Let's see what happens, Good Cora, luck. here we go. Okay. What? No way. Oh! <laughs> I looped out, but it works. <laughs> wow, that worked a lot better than I thought. Well, as you can see, it worked. It is in its 52 tooth gear uh, after just mashing on it with, I don't know, what is that, 15, 20 feet of pedaling up this punchy climb. Uh, however, I couldn't handle the power. I couldn't handle the torque. Well, you did make it to the top, so I'd say that wasn't a complete failure. Yeah, I win. First off, let's talk about how easy the installation is, which is truly a one of a kind install and setup process. I am honestly stoked for the average rider that has a tough time adjusting their derailleur or performing initial new derailleur setup at home, since there's a lot of home mechanics that have a tricky time adjusting their shifting, despite being able to do way harder things like service their fork lowers and bleed the brakes, simply due to the finicky nature of derailleur adjustments. I also think that the entire mentality and design around the installation alone is a game-changing feature for mountain bike drivetrains. Creating a system that doesn't need adjustment screws and is nearly fully adjusted by design, that's pretty freaking cool. Now let's talk about how this stuff performs on the trail. I've been riding the XX transmission and Torrier has been riding the XO setup and both immediately produce an extremely crisp, quiet and smooth shift from gear to gear 
just in the parking lot after installation, and it got even better once you actually hit the trails. I played around with shifting under increased amounts of load on a fire road climb, and first would shift under a casual cadence, but then mash as hard as I could while shifting, and it actually did shift more crisp and noticeably more quiet under heavier load. That smooth shifting under load also created a silky smooth power transfer while pedaling over tricky single track climbs, as the reduction of any type of clunkiness kept my traction very consistent on the dirt. I actually think this is gonna be pretty freaking sweet on e-bikes too, where you are definitely pedaling pretty hard with the help of the motor. Not only is the power transfer super smooth from the derailleur, chain, and cassette interface, but also it's a more smooth transition in between gears due to the updated gearing jumps in the cassette. Previous Eagle cassettes used 36, 42, 52 for the largest three climbing gears, while the new T-Type cassettes use a 38, 42, and 52, and it makes a positively noticeable difference in traction and the overall shifting experience. When you reach the top of the climb and start descending, you do notice that the stronger clutch is actually pretty quiet. Now this is especially apparent through rough chattery sections, and I think that everyone is going to be super happy with this feature alone. Everyone likes a nice quiet bike, and this is an overall quiet drivetrain. Mike and I both have the new RockShox suspension on our bikes, which is the quietest suspension that we've ever tried. So pairing that up with the beefed up clutch makes for a seriously silent bike. Also, so far I haven't been able to test the strength very much, but Tor smashes derailleur extremely hard and it somehow doesn't have a scratch on it. Yeah, I smoked the stump going really fast and it spun me around like 180 degrees right onto my butt. And I guarantee that any derailleur mounted on a hanger would have gotten ripped off 10 out of 10 times. But this T-type derailleur, it actually didn't even have a scratch on it. Plus, even if I did break it or scratch it, I could just pop a fresh skid plate or an entire cage on it to bring it back to showroom specs. And last but not least, I personally really like the new shifter remote pod. I really like the crazy adjustability of it, and I think that the buttons have a nice positive feedback. To me, I just think it feels a little bit more crisp than the original shifter remote myself. I personally prefer the button feeling and location on the previous axis shifter and would run that on my personal bike. And it's pretty cool that SRAM is letting us choose between the two. So how does this new T-Type Axis stuff compare to the original Axis? Well, I was curious about this myself and I went out to test the two back to back up this stupid, dumb little hill climb that I found. What I learned is that the T-Type system does shift a little more crisp and quietly and definitely shifts better the more load that you push into the pedals. And that's not true with the original Axis. Original Axis feels like it shifts almost the same no matter how much watt is that you're pumping into that cottage. But overall, what I learned was actually how freaking good that original access shifts overall. Now, sure, this new stuff does shift better, but I was quite surprised at just how well the original version shifts under load all on its own. Plus, the decreased noise, ease of setup, and smoother jumps between climbing cogs are all just very nice touches with this new T-Type system as well. Also worth mentioning is that my original XX1 access derailleur has been on my other bike, my DaVinci Spartan, for almost four years now with countless hours in the Whistler bike park. And despite being visibly smashed and scarred to heck, it's still straight as an arrow. So at this point, I can't even begin to think just how insanely strong this T-Type derailleur is. So obviously we like this stuff, but Mike, is there anything that we don't like? Well, personally, I'm just hoping for an oval chain ring as my brain and knees somehow just get along better with those but those might take some time to show up due to the new eight volt chain ring compatibility with these new cranks. And while I haven't needed to charge my battery yet, technically the shorter battery life is a con due to the stronger clutch, but I think that's well worth it for a more quiet ride. Also, another con is that these new transmissions are only compatible with UDH frames. To test out this new T-Type stuff, I actually had to build this entire new bike since my beloved DaVinci Spartan doesn't use a UDH. This is obviously not directly relatable to the average rider in this specific scenario, but if you do really want this new technology, it just straight up won't work with your non-UDH frame. So to sum up our review, here are our key takeaways. Is this SRAM transmission a true game changer? I think it is. Without a derailleur hanger, I've personally stress tested the full mount derailleur in the field and I can confirm that it is at least as strong as SRAM says. Plus, building off of the shifting better the harder you pedal idealism is an amazing way forward since people are just going to be riding harder and harder as time goes on. Plus, the installation and setup procedure is 100% a true game changer when it comes down to bicycle drivetrains because there's truly nothing like it. And it got rid of all those finicky little adjustment screws that most people don't exactly love. The new T-Type access shifts are more crisp in all situations, it's stronger, installs extremely easy, is quieter on descents, and is somehow cheaper than previous access. If you have a frame with UDH and either are replacing your drivetrain or doing a 
fresh new build, it's obvious that T-Type Access is the way to go. But if your original Access works just fine and you're happy with the performance, I don't think you need to go rush to our website to buy the new stuff. However, if you do want your shifting to be a little more crispy, have a smoother jump between climbing cogs, have a physically more robust drivetrain altogether, have a quieter bike while descending, and you just like the overall simplicity of it, then this new Axis transmission is gonna be a worthwhile upgrade to your mountain bike. And last but not least, we should also mention that yes, these transmissions are actually cheaper than the previous Axis drivetrains, which is pretty sweet. For example, the XO transmission costs 135 bucks less than an XO1 drivetrain coming in at 1,599 bucks, and the XX transmission costs $100 less than an XX1 drivetrain, costing $2,049. The XXSL is another level above these two, which has more carbon fiber and comes in at $2,199. Because these transmissions require T-type components from front to back, these kits come with everything you need, including a shifter pod, crank set, Chain ring, chain, cassette, derailleur, battery, battery charger, and this super rad sticker pack. Where is the sticker pack? Get here the sticker pack. We got a sticker pack. Here's here. the cool sticker Look pack. Look at all these stickers right here. <laughs> so it performs better, costs less, and is way easier to install. Seems like SRAM has crushed it with these new transmissions, and we're huge fans of them here at the Losco. Which of these features are you most curious about? Let us know down in the comments because new features in the bike industry generally lead to some interesting comments. So let us know what you think. All right, well, if you want to order one of these transmissions for your very own bike, head over to thelostco.com, click this link where you'll get free shipping in the USA on any one of these transmissions. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And to stick around for more mountain biking videos like this, hit that subscribe button with that little bell notification so that you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Later.